What's the world coming to? I mean, I mean, you know, I have experienced several things in my life that have just, just, you know. And I know that it's the, you know, the stereotypical shot is, you know, Jean Luc Picard from, uh, from, uh, Star Trek Next Generation. Just, I mean, y'all have heard me talk about it, but you know what? I want to hear y'all talk about it. Y'all share with us down below what moments made you facepalm. Like, literally. And I know what some of them are going to be. <laughs> Whenever the Renegades post a new video. Yeah, I, I already hear it. I can I can hear that now. Ha ha ha. Funny. But, anyway. Yeah, so. R slash facepalm. It's been a while since we've done one of these. And, honestly, I enjoy these. Although... The frustration uh, from them does sometimes make me question humanity and the level of which it's just like... It, it makes me question whether or not we sh like some people should be allowed to reproduce. I do that all the time anyways. What? Question whether or not people should be allowed to reproduce. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, I think that... <coughs> Alright. <coughs> well, I think there should be protections against, like, like inbreeding and stuff like that. Well, I literally know somebody. Uh, he's someone who's actually uh, someone who me and Chad actually know very well uh, from our hometown. He is literally inbred, and it shows because the dude's the dude's dumb. But he has managed to work himself into a good job, find himself a woman that loves him, but apparently. He he's going to be a dad. Now, the woman that he that he got pregnant is not a family member, but instead, you know, like just there's people worried it's like because he's inbred that's going to have an effect on the kid. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there who would say that that's, you know, that's not good. You know, that that's not a good thing. You know, that that he shouldn't be allowed to have kids. But at the same time, in my mind, it's like, but if the kid comes out, like, normal, if the kid comes out, you know, with no birth defects or anything like that, then what's the problem? I mean, it happens. I mean, it's a step back towards the right direction for the lineage. So. Exactly. And it's a, it's a diversification of the genes, which is what you need in order for the human species to survive. <sighs> but anyway... Yeah, all that being said, though, facepalm, the world is your canvas. Let's check and see what level of stupidity we're subjecting ourselves to today. Here we go. This opening one's already a winner. Mom shares colorful travel hack to keep toddlers quiet on flights, letting them destroy the aircraft. Okay, not destroy. You know what I mean. You know exactly what I'm saying. Deface. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I don't know. Vandalize. The ink from the markers could see. Huh? Vandalize. Yes. Keep in and absolutely destroy the entire plane. You never know. Plus, think about the resale value. Apple wants to own the rights to images of real apples around the world. <laughs> because, of course, they do. Apple's taking <sighs> on apples in a truly weird trademark battle. Apple, the company, wants the rights of the image of apples, the fruit, in Switzerland. One of dozens of countries where it's flexing its legal muscles. I've got a sneaky suspicion uh. that it's not going to stick, but sure, go ahead and try, Apple. See how that's going to work out for you. Fuck you, Tim. Huh, yeah, it got pretty cold. Had to pull out the windshield scraper this morning. I could have helped you. I appreciate it, but I'm so far away. And it'd be quicker to just do it myself. Plus, you save some gas money. Um, okay. I was just trying to be nice. Well, yes, and I appreciate it. Thank you. I feel like you don't mean that. You never give me a chance at anything, whether it's scraping the ice off of your vehicle or taking you to dinner. I'm glad your fiancé died. What the that fuck, escal dude? That escalated quick. Like, bro, she's good. Like, you don't need to be a dick because, you know, she doesn't need you. Like, like she can handle it herself. Dude, it, she's a self-reliant person. She doesn't need you to scrape the... Sometimes it just baffles me that some people would sink to that level. 
to just like it's like well you it's like you don't need me well fine i don't need you either and you know what i'm glad that horrible thing happened to you a long time ago there's some real pieces of shit out there yes there are are actually this could besides, be besides it's never a good thing to have a relationship with someone who needs you you want a relationship with someone who wants you exactly also not only that this this post could also belong in r slash nice guys Mm -hmm. Artificially fast. What in the world is your problem? She really expected him to pay for her entire family? Woman stuck with $3,100 dinner bill after her blind date refused to pay for the 23 family members she brought along. Ooh. You think? I wonder why he would have done such a thing. You think? It's a blind date. A date meaning the two of you. If you brought 23 more people along with you, that's on you. You're, oh my god. I think at best I would pay for someone and her friend. Because I would be like, well that's understandable if she was meeting me for the first time and she didn't. She didn't feel comfortable. You know, feel comfortable like meeting me by herself. Like that's understandable. Yes. Like if I have the extra money, sure I'll pay for her friend's food too. Yes, like, that's it, perfectly logical. That I'm nice, you know. That is a perfectly logical, like a par perfectly logical thing. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way a normal person would bring 23 family members to a blind date and then expect that person to foot the whole bill. Uh-uh, not gonna happen. You know what? Every single person there pays for their own bill, provided no kids came along, which I imagine they didn't. Reasonableness. Marty ate four-sixths of his pizza, and Luis ate five-sixths of his pizza. Marty ate more pizza than Louis. Luis, Louis, L who cares? How is that possible? Marty's pizza is bigger than Louis's pizza. That is not possible, because five-sixths is greater than four-sixths, so Louis ate more. Okay. Uh, reasonableness. I can understand, like, this... The, it, how old are... Like, like, what grade is this being presented in? By the handwriting and everything, it looks like a fairly low grade. Yeah. Also, this this answer does make sense. Because, but say... you don't have the information to prove that either. I know, but at the same time, it's... It, it's a at least a reasonable excuse as to why that is possible. I, I'm so glad I don't do school anymore. What are Florida ounces? I don't think much of this when I lived in Florida, or didn't rather. Many products were labeled in Florida ounces. But now that I live in another state, I'm surprised to see products still labeled with Florida ounces. I looked up Florida ounces, but couldn't find much information about them. Google doesn't know how to convert them to regular ounces. <laughs> F-L-O-Z. That stands for fluid ounces, not Florida. Congratulations. I was, trying, I was sitting there trying to figure out what the fuck they were I, talking I about. Knew, I, like, I knew when I saw Florida ounces, I was just like, wait, Florida ounces? Is that a thing? And then I was like, wait, Florida... Fl oh, you moron. Oh. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least the OP came back to this and wasn't embarrassed and just like left, like, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. I love that realization. Oh, sh Okay. Um, yep, don't worry. This is going to be a defining. No, r slash no stupid questions. <laughs> yeah, that's a stupid question. I'm well, sorry. He was a human being. This is real life. We're playing for points, and there's a shit ton of stupid questions. Yes. After my mom died, I found hundreds of receipts from the money she sent Pat Robertson and Creflo Dollar with prayers for me to have a better life. A single mom working nights tricked to give from the little she had for small glimmers of hope. I won't mourn Pat Robertson. Yeah. I don't know many people that did or are or were planning to. Evil is evil. That's that's all there is to it. Yeah, the grift of of like of uh, what are they call prosperity preachers, you know, Joel Osteen and people like that. I don't have any respect for them. Now, 
What I would do is I would say if there's a donation, you know, donation plate going around and you know that that donation plate is going 100% to a cause, like say someone's in the hospital and their hospital bills have, have piled up, we need you to donate so that this can relieve their, you know, relieve their, uh, you know, hospital bills a little bit. Anything that you can give, we would greatly appreciate. You know, giving, and community giving and stuff like that. My pastor was always about that. My pastor never took a dollar and put it back into the church itself unless something catastrophic happened, which it never did. Thankfully, you know, God, you know, God bless nothing ever did happen. But he always was like like asking people to give if they could to help others in the community. It's just like this old like this this el older guy that was a parishioner there. He went, and we basically, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, part of the chorus and everything. But they found out that he had cancer. And uh, because of uh, the chemotherapy and everything, he couldn't sing anymore. And he was sitting in there in church, and uh, my pastor basically asked everyone to, like, you know, they passed the donation plate around, and people gave and everything. And then at the end of it, he literally grabbed everything that was in the plate, put it in an envelope... And he walked down to the old man, and he shook his hand, and he basically handed him that and said, May this go towards your bills and help you get back up on your feet. Thank you for all that you've done for this church and all the people that you have brought into this, and we thank you, and we want you to get better. You see, that's what you're supposed to do. You don't, you don't be a prosperity preacher and act like you're doing the Lord's work when all you're doing is just putting it in your own pocket and buying basketball teams and buying big frickin' mansions and all this nonsense that you don't need. When there are people out there who do need it and are praying for it, but yet you feel like you deserve it because you're one of God's favorite children. No, God abandoned you a long time ago, and I hope you never get into heaven. Yeah, and they missed Period. Yeah, they won't, because they missed a very important parable in the Bible about the rich man. And the poor That's man. right, yes. Uh. In this particular case, guess what? No one is going to change the climate. It's freaking nature. Get over it. Ever get really sick? Don't go to the doctor. Just die. It's the freaking nature. Get over it. Oh, I hate people. Crying at your wedding is gay now, fellas. Uh, there's a trend, and I think I've only seen it in the last five to six years, of grown men crying when they see their bride walk down the aisle. I have to say it's extremely gay. Men shouldn't <laughs> cry at such things. It should be reserved for more extreme moments. You know, like pain or death. <sighs> if this is a troll yes. post, it's a good one. But... Marrying a woman is very gay. Oh, yes. Uh, marrying a woman... At... Or man, and crying at your wedding is extremely gay. And I guess then I would be gay because I don't think I'd be able to contain my emotions because I'd be extremely happy that I found someone who wanted to spend their life with me. Mm -hmm. I mean that that to me is an is something that I uh, to this day I I I don't know if I will ever find anybody who will be willing to do that with me. I mean if I could just find somebody that I can depend on and just have as someone I can talk to. I'd be greatly appreciative of that, but I don't I don't know. But yeah. Weddings, you know, crying at a wedding, that's gay. Alright, I'm gonna be honest with you. Shut the hell up. That's my honesty. Just shut up. You know? I hope that your husband does not cry at the sight of you walking down the aisle one day. Because that would mean he's gay. Now, I hope that they don't show you that intense love because it seems like you kind of don't deserve it right now. For four years, I've received insane notes and threats from Trumpers who believe I work for the New York Times. I don't, I never have, but in various bios, it says New York Times bestselling Aww. author and they cannot tell the difference. How pathetic is that? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> they see that you're a New York Times bestselling author and they think that you work for the New York Times? People are stupid. What else is there to say? People are stupid. Mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, wow. There really is no helping some of these people. Realizing that my ways, landlord yeah. is living my paycheck to my paycheck. It's insane. 
One time I sent rent later in the evening on the 1st, and he complained because the bank overdrafted him on his mortgage payment. The hell? I'm the main breadwinner in my landlord's family. <laughs> in some cases, that's how it is. I hate to say it, but some, like... Because of how rent situations are in this country and everything like that, inflation basically just destroys any profit margin. So, and again, I think there should be a cap on the amount that you are allowed to charge over how much the property, like how much like rent is supposed to be. Um, for instance, like if, if, you know, the overall cost of the property, you know, taxes, house payment, whatever, is like is like eight hundred dollars i don't think you should be allowed to like demand anything more than say like i don't know what would 20 percent uh anything like over like 20 percent of what of like what on top of that so 20 percent on top of 800 would make the rent 960 dollars i think that i think that the whole deal is is just Rent's just getting ridiculous in this country. Even landlords are having to turn, like... I actually read one. One that scares the shit out of me is that a lot of corporate entities are getting into buying properties now instead of, like, individual, like, landlords and everything like that. And the corporations don't give a fuck. Nope. If you don't have their money, then they will take every action they can to kick you out. Whereas... Some landlords will work with you. I've ran into landlords. I've told them, like, hey, I'm short this month, but I will make it up next month. I, I, and it's happened. And they've been, and, you know, I would rather deal with a person than a corporate entity that just doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's the thing. I mean, I, the, the, the situation's just not pretty. And rent is, and renting nowadays is a lot more, dangerous than it has been in the past i mean just ask chad and nikki i mean they're trying to find a place and trying to find a place that will accept dogs especially dogs as big as uh, shorty that's about damn near impossible but anyway sorry yeah that doesn't see dude at that point at th <sighs> there's nothing i can really say i don't know that is incredibly awful that we're now just it we're here this is where we've arrived I'm confused how he's homeless but has a working cell phone. You're confused how a home costs more than a phone? Is this your first day on Earth? Dude, yes. I love it when people create goalposts, so to speak, or requirements or move the bar around for what constitutes what being homeless is. When being homeless means you don't have a home, right? But you have to meet all these other standards. You're not supposed to have a cell phone. Why do you not stink? You look a little clean. Were you able to shower? Hmm. You don't seem homeless to me. You know what? It's just gross. Quit continuing to dehumanize homeless people more and more. It's getting weird that it's becoming more and more normalized, <laughs> especially with Gen X. I don't know what it is about you Gen Xers, but you're violently disgusting towards homeless people, and it's really unique to you guys. I divorced my dying husband. I don't know about that. I... I've heard plenty of Zoomers basically, like, say homeless people need to be eradicated. I've, I've heard Zoomers say this. They literally are, like, I've heard kids basically just saying, like, we just need to kill all the homeless. That's fuck. I know. I hope it, everyone who ever says that ends up in that situation. I, I agree. I agree. I want you to be homeless just so you can see the type of hell that, like, that those people have to go through. Also, I read this this right here, and... I want, I want this woman to like. I want this, I want this woman to get the most. Jesus. He wallowed in self pity and killed my vibe. <laughs> Till near death do us part. A woman has opened up about why she divorced her dying husband, saying his five year cancer battle took a toll on their marriage as he wallowed in self pity. Wow, five years, five years. You're 
whatever. Nope, no, nope, I can't. I can't go on a rant about this one because I will actually just ruin my own day. I've confirmed that Mark Zuckerberg is serious about fighting Elon Musk and is now waiting on the details, if Musk decides to follow through. The story speaks for itself, a Meta spokesperson says. Zuck's Instagram post saying, send me location, <laughs> Vegas Octagon. Oh yeah, and didn't Elon actually back out like two days later saying his mommy didn't want him to do it? Elon's mommy had to step in and tell him not to fight because... No, I mean, I don't... I, for as far as I know, it's still on. Hold on. Let's see. Yeah, it's still on. Yeah. <laughs> it's still on. I don't know where Robin got that information, the... According to all the sources, it's still on, 100%. Just to be fair, while I don't like billionaires, and I certainly don't like Mark Zuckerberg, the dude does train. The dude has won tournaments. Has yeah, I was kind of thinking he's probably going to fuck up Elon Musk. Well, age alone, like... dude. I mean, Elon's almost 60, I think. And Mark... I guarantee you Mark Plus has... he has the advantage of being a lizard man, so... <laughs> That's true. There's that. That dude would absolutely... It's going to be like a Dragon Ball Z fight. Musk surprises him and starts to actually beat him. And he's like, impossible. I'll have to show you my true form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, evolves into a fucking, into a fucking, he evolves into a reptile yeah, from Mortal Kombat. Yeah, velociraptor in the middle of the ring. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Musk oh. is just like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At that point, Elon Musk just, like, hits a button and, like, his Iron Man suit activates. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Elon Musk in five seconds. One who works out and keeps himself in good shape. The other does that to a significantly lesser degree. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen Elon, I've seen Elon like in shape, and he and he isn't bad. What like in terms of just like whenever he's like in shape. But yeah, Mark is pretty active with like jujitsu, box or kickboxing, and you know just like staying you know more fit. So yeah, I'd say Mark has the advantage whenever it comes to like athleticism and youth and all that. But I would just love to see those two fight each other. I think it'd be hilarious. A really funny bro. The man who threw the phone at Bebe at, at BB Bebe BB Rexa admits yeah. he was purposefully trying to hit her because he thought it would be funny. He's since been charged with two counts of assault and one count of harassment. Oh, and one count of aggravated harassment. Oh, and one count of attempted assault, according to Rolling Stone. Haha, <laughs> so funny, bro. Let me give somebody a black eye. And yeah, that's a hell of a black eye. Yes. You're a fucking loser. Yep. A complete loser. Yeah, this the this is the face of someone that I would expect to pull some shit like that. Just like look at that like smug, self satisfied look on his face. He's just like he's just like I'm so funny. I could I could be a big I could be a big celebrity if only I was given a chance. No, no, you you honestly you belong in a pit. You belong in a pit with all the other vipers, and you don't deserve anything. Protect your bloodline. Posting straight up racism on the timeline. Yeah. The fuck. <sighs> Hate to say it, but <laughs> ex-girlfriend's dad was just like that. 100%. The mom was okay. Well, that's the weird thing. He said that, he basically told me that, you know, he just didn't want his daughter date, like, I dated a girl at one time, she was half black, half Hispanic, and she was awesome. She was probably the first girl that I ever truly fell in love with, and still, still, like, I, I feel like she was the one, but, dude, I just hate the fact that, you know, she, he basically, in no short terms, told me, you know, like, he just didn't approve of me being in a relationship with her uh, because, you know, because you know, he didn't want that. And I'm like, isn't it about what she wants and not what you want? He didn't care. He basically said, it won't last. Trust me. And I told her about that. And she's like, oh, he's just playing around with you. And about two weeks later, she broke up with me. <sighs> and that's the crazy thing. 
he married like a like a fa- like a fair skinned Colombian woman. Well, not fair skinned. She 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 was a bit tan, but dude, how can he say that to me when he himself married someone who is like part Hispanic? I, I, I don't, or who married someone who's Hispanic? I don't get it. I don't get it. It's stupidity. Yeah. I'm sorry, but stupidity. It's it, there is no limit to stupidity. It comes in every shade. Every gender, every country, every culture, stupidity is everywhere. And you have to look out for it. Anyway, sorry. Fine. Woohoo! Yep. Cool. Isn't that neat? This is wild, or a wild labor violation case. Anyway, a California restaurant had someone impersonate a priest and hear workers' confessions. Then the restaurant used that information to retaliate against workers. Wow. I hope that that restaurant Uh got immediately shut down. Yes. But if this is in the United States, oh, California, that's technically in the United States, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you know here, no one really gets punished when they absolutely need to be punished, and I mean properly. This sounds more like an inspirational quote to me. Satan doesn't whisper believe in me. He whispers believe in yourself. Um. Uh, what? That's stupid. You're stupid. Belief in oneself and forgiving oneself is one of the steps to, like, accepting... uh, uh, What? What? This is supposed to be an ad for Jesus, but it makes Satan seem frickin' rad as hell. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what the thought process was here. There is no thought process. The the thought process is they're trying to get across why Satanism is the wrong choice. Because Satanism is essentially like worshiping of yourself. Well, yeah, and I get that, but at the same time... It's like they're phrasing it in a way that's not going to sound good to anybody. No, well, belief in yourself is something that you have to, like, you have to believe in yourself, and you have to, like, take the steps to, like, find, like, like, ask for forgiveness for your wrongdoings in life. Whereas, you know, self-belief and believing you haven't done anything wrong, that's, like, that's the problem. That's where things go wrong. I, I'm i sorry, but you're trying to be coy here with, like, your little quote and everything, Matt Smethurst, but you come off as a pompous dick. And also, you, you're basically pushing more people away from God, and yeah, anyway. For life. Than he normally is, I mean. Of course, Satan's the bad guy. <laughs> My family member is adamant this is real. Okay. More Trump heroism that's being willfully ignored that, by the main... That's not Trump. How many times are people going to be fooled by bad Photoshop? Stream media. Wow, it's it's so funny how not Trump's body that is. It's insane. Mm-hmm. That is not even close to his body. It... it no. No, his hands are way too big in the Not picture. to mention, look at his stomach. Yeah. And look at look at the shitty Trump Photoshop. Trump has a fucking gut, man. <laughs> look at the shitty Photoshop yeah. around the neck. That's so easy to Photoshop. Oh my god! No, I'm sorry. If you fall for this, yikes! So I was coaching a basketball camp this week, and I asked a kid what his name was, and he goes, "Wee." And I was like, "Okay, I guess we're in Austin, so not shocking." Anyway, I called this child Reed for three days. Turns out he had a speech impediment, and his name is Reed. Ah, ah, <laughs> yes. Uh, something that Fuck. you could have clarified immediately. Like, I'm sorry, if someone tells me their name is Reed, I'm going to repeat weed. it back and go, did you, say, did you say Reed? And then they'll maybe have room to explain, you know? So that one is completely on you. Millennials are causing a baby bust. They aren't having enough kids to keep the U.S. population at the replacement level. That's because rent is $1,500 and jobs are paying $12 an hour. And in a lot of places, even lower. I have no basis for this other than an image I saw online somewhere, but I'm pretty sure there's only three or four states where a regular minimum wage job full-time can get you a two-bedroom apartment. (sighs) Yeah, mostly it's the inflation now. Well, it is inflation. And not only that, but also... um, I hate to say it, but... The whole deal with the uh, population statistics and everything like that. Basically, everything that's happening is forcing 
the population uh, statistics to instead of being a column, which is what a healthy one is supposed to look like, instead it's turning into an upside down pyramid. And when that happens, you basically don't have enough population to replace the ones that have come before, and it can potentially lead to like economy collapse. And we're going to see that in various countries here over the next few years, because in a lot of places in the developing world, uh, the population column is gone. And it's basically because not a lot of people are having children as much anymore. And some countries are straight up lying about how many people they have. Uh, China. <clears throat> uh, did I say that loud? I'm sorry. And I don't want to hear anybody saying, uh, two bedroom? Wow, someone's needing a lot more than they actually do need. Yeah, get the f*** out of here with that. Uh, no, I, I hate to say it, but... I... Heck, when I lived by myself, I, I needed at least a two bedroom thing because I needed something for my office. Well, if you have a couple that can stay in one bedroom and then you have a kid, you want to have a kid a uh, bedroom for your kid at least. Exactly. Well, it's just like my my, my cousin Zach. Put everyone in the same fucking bedroom together after well, you have a kid. Well, it's just like my cousin Zach. My cousin Zach, him and his wife, when they moved into the uh, the place they live now, they wanted at least three bedrooms. Do you know why? Because they plan to at least have two kids. The rich versus the poor. I have not looked into this probably as much as I should, and I'll be honest, if what is happening on the right is is what I'm assuming is happening, then I, I that's just going to ruin my goddamn week, month, year even. Oceangate CEO Stockton Rush email exchange with submersible operations expert Rob McCallum. All right, well, let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. You're wanting to use a prototype unclass technology in a very hostile place. As much as I appreciate entrepreneurship and innovation, you're potentially putting an entire industry at risk. Yes. I know that our engineering-focused, innovative approach, as opposed to an existing standards compliance-focused design process, flies in the face of the submersible orthodoxy. But that is the nature of innovation. I've grown tired of industry players who try to use a safety argument to stop innovation and new entrants oh. from entering their small existing market. Since Guillermo and I started OceanGate, we've heard the baseless cry of you're going to kill someone way too often. I take this as a serious personal insult. <laughs> what? I think you're potentially placing yourself and your clients in a dangerous dynamic. Ironically, in your race to Titanic, you're mirroring the famous catch cry, she is unsinkable. Having dived to the Titanic and having stood in a coroner's court as a technical expert, it would be remiss of me not to bring this to your attention. The dude definitely understood. He knew. Well, he absolutely yes. knew that he was. Yeah. He was told. He was told that it was over unsafe. and over again. Did he understand? I don't know about that because he sounds like a fucking idiot. Well, no. Yeah, I I could see that as you know him being an idiot, but also at the same time, he was just arrogant. Arrogance is often. It, it's strange how arrogance and ignorance often coincide with one another, and. One often leads to the other. Through your ignorance, you well, become like, arrogant, and through your arrogance, you are ignorant. That's what what they talk about on the Always Sunny podcast. Their characters are full of ignorance because of their arrogance. Yes. And vice versa. Yes. Sort of mirroring a certain captain of a certain ship that he was taking people to go see in terms of, yeah, full speed ahead, dude. The Roman Catholic Church has launched an inquiry after two nuns came back from their missionary trips pregnant. Ooh, boy, we could have... We could have a long conversation about certain things, but we're not going to do that here today. You know how you eliminate degeneracy and uh, this, like, veil of secrecy and, you know, like, shunning of, of, like, the clergy and everything? Get rid of the oath of celibacy! Jesus, H. Car what is wrong with, like, people having, like, you know, being married and, like, having children in wedlock and everything like that if they're a part of the clergy. What's the matter with that? It's like, oh, yeah, it's like, I only, like, have a relationship with God. And I'm like, that's a bit arrogant of you, don't you think? You know, that you, des that you deserve to be in a relationship with God in that manner? I mean, isn't, like, it, wouldn't the point be, you know, live your life, like, the best of the, the life that God gave you and serve your community while also... You know, being you know, you know, being able to live out your life 
as a father and as a parent and everything, it, and as a husband or a wife. It, oh my god. Anyway, sorry. We're never gonna get through this video because we have to and rant about on, every so single thing in it. <laughs> yeah, mind. sorry. I'm 19 and I pay for my own car insurance, bills, and have my own place. Y'all 20 plus still living off your parents. Sick. You What's your only Indiana. fans? Your total cost per month is probably $2 on a sack of corn. Yeah? <laughs> Try doing that in LA or San Francisco or Denver or really any major city. The bitter almond tree was banned in America in 1995 because it's the highest source of B17, which prevents and treats cancer. Still trust your government? This isn't true at all. They aren't banned. The sale is regulated because they contain a fairly high level of cyanide. Also, Ooh. please, please don't use George Carlin for your dip memes, okay? Don't attribute stuff to him that shouldn't be at all. Agreed. Sure, he would have been critical of the government, but he wouldn't have been this stupid in any of his arguments, yes. for sure. Pretty sure no one else thinks that's what kinda salty means. I was walking through Target in the kids section when my daughter found this sweatshirt. Not knowing what it meant, she wanted to get it because of the color. I explained how it's inappropriate. Thanks to Target, I'm having to explain to a child, way too young, about phrases having to do with is. No thank you, I cut up my Target cards and will never take my kids to a store that grooms children. Damn, <laughs> you're a goddamn moron, aren't you? You are insanely s- <laughs> Not to mention you have a dirty mind. Yeah, that's on you. Why do you attribute that to... to... Mm. Stupid. The weird, baseless garbage about what Target is and was selling is so insane. They're coming for LGBTQ+, they're trying to eradicate us. <sighs> they know that's what they're doing, and they know they don't have to try and be honest about anything. They can say the wildest crap about us and their base will have absolutely nothing to say in retort. They'll just go, uh-huh, yep, that's right. My girlfriend's rejection email. You can't make this up. Oh, boy. All right, well, let's strap here in here. Here we go. Dear boy, <sighs> we want to thank you for the time you've invested in our interview process for the legal corporate analyst position at Blankety Blank Blank. On behalf of the whole hiring team, we appreciate it. Oh, boy. We interviewed a lot of highly qualified candidates for this role, and while we were very impressed with your experience and qualifications, we've decided to move forward with another candidate. We understand this is not the reply you were hoping for. It was not an easy decision to make. Our team really enjoyed getting to know you. We really appreciate your say something personal about the candidate. <laughs> wow! <laughs> oh! <laughs> that is just, oh, that is gorgeous. Exposed. What did you like about them? Why did we interview them? Do we want to consider them for future roles? I hope you'll stay in touch and kiss. No, no. I hope no. you don't consider me for future roles because clearly I'm not a person to you. Goodbye. Not invited often, I guess. Question. My 17 daughter, who is homeschooled, is active in church and professes to be a Christian, has a friend that is a lesbian. Her friend is graduating from public school this week and wants my daughter to attend. My daughter is thinking she needs to be there for her friend. My husband and I do not want her to attend, but it appears she will go. What do we do? Let her go. Uh, shut the fuck up and realize that your daughter is about to be an adult you don't get to control anymore. About a person realize canceling Realize that Jesus her sat with sinners, even if you think that's a sin, but I don't think it is. I don't either. G like, if Jesus shouldn't can, matter either way. Exactly. If Jesus can sit with sinners and like the worst of the worst, sitting next to a lesbian while they graduate, there is no problem with that. Mm -hmm. Mid ride, so she doesn't have to pay the driver. Wait, what? She literally yes. canceled the ride so he wouldn't get paid. That was an attempt at fraud. Yes. No, you can cancel the ride. That's fine and acceptable. Don't freaking drop the person off in a weird location, though. That person is still a customer. No, they're not. No, they are not. Like. I've seen that, like, there's a video of a girl who did that in the middle of, uh, of, a, of a ride. This guy, like, uh, films his stuff for, like, evidence and stuff like that, just in case someone tries to assault him or someone tries to rob him. And he does this, and uh, she basically, like, cancels, and he's just like, why'd you just cancel? Because he has his phone, like, right here, and he can see, he's like, Ryder, ha like, Ryder has, canceled, uh, has canceled the ride. And it's like, oh, why'd you cancel the ride? And she's like... Oh, I thought uh, you know uh, I was gonna 
set it up for multiple stops because you know Lyft started doing uh, multiple stops and everything like that. It's like I'm an Uber driver, <laughs> and she's just like. Well, Lyft does it, and I just thought that that's what I had to do. It's like, no, what you did was you canceled because you didn't want to pay. And it's like, dude, how bad are you, uh, like, how hard up are you for money when you can't afford $7 for a freaking Uber? There should literally be a function that whenever you get into the car with the person, they tap on their phone, customer is in my car, and at that point, it turns off your ability to cancel your ride. Yeah. Like, now, after that, if, like, you have to emergency, like, have them pull over and get out before the ride's over, then they should tell you, like, call customer service so you can get reimbursed for the remainder of the ride we didn't take. Exactly. And also, the the truth is, not only did uh, she get mad and she was just like, she was just like, you a bitch, you a bitch. And he's just like, whatever, get out of my car. And she's like, are you going to drop me off where I, where I asked you to? He's like, no, I'm not dropping you. I'm dropping you off here because you canceled the ride and you've wasted my time. And then she's like, you're a bitch, you're a bitch. And he's just like, whatever, get out. And then she tries to, like, reach up and smack him, and he, like, leans out. He's like, what are you doing? What, what are you doing? Stop. And then he, he looks away for, like, one second, and then she comes back in again and, like, smacks him in the face. And he's just, and then all of a sudden, she's, she's just like, yeah, get slapped like a bitch. And then she, like, slams his door and, like, like walks away. And he's just like... <laughs> Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> That's his fault for not noticing. Everyone's making up that she scammed him. Pardon me? What? Ooh. No. Dude, don't you even. They deadass used <laughs> Getty Images photo of a shark and cropped it onto their poster. The DCEU is a freaking joke. That's what stock uh, photos yeah. are for. Did you think they actually photographed a dude chilling with sharks? <laughs> oh my god, I love that so much. It's so embarrassing. What is the alternative? That they spend a million dollars finding some sharks and never saw that poster, but I don't like no, it very much. <laughs> they buy the stock images because that makes freaking sense. Yes. Because someone already took photos of sharks for them. That's a win win. Jesus, how long did she live to? Is she still alive? Let's see. Born 1880, died 1968. 28 years. What? How did she write 35 books? Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. Oh. Your math is extremely off. She lived to be 87. She it was lived... 20 years by the time it hit the 1900s, dude. 28 hours old she died. How you get 28? 1880 to minus 1968. No. You did that backwards. <laughs> you did that backwards. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> 80 minus 60. Wow, that's not how that works at all, my dude. What the hell? Scoop, the Wisconsin pharmacist, no oh boy, believes the earth is flat and the sky is actually a shield put up by the government to prevent individuals from seeing God. Totally. My dude, how much meth are you on, and where can I get some? Yeah, uh, I don't want it. I'm joking, by the way. If you actually peel back the sky, God's massive galactic scale face just kind of appears. You're just sitting and, up there like, uh, yeah. Yeah, all of a sudden, it's just like, you see it? It's like God peering from behind the curtain. He's just like, ugh. I'm not going back down there for a while. <laughs> He's right. He's got a point. Who needs a survey? People no longer believe working hard will lead to a better life, survey shows. Yeah, that survey is like a tax write-off for some deep company out there. I guarantee it. We did not need a survey to know that. What are you going to do? Kill them? Kim Jong-un bans suicide after numbers skyrocketed. Yeah, that's uh, that seems a little odd. I'm not sure how they're going to enforce that. How's that, that? one working oh. out for you? You know how it's probably working out? It's probably if you actually unalive yourself, yeah. then he'll go and unalive your whole fucking family afterwards. Oh my god! That's probably how he's enforcing it, because that's how fucked up he is. I could say this. Um, imagine him making attempted, like, <laughs> there's someone who said, I think it was Bill Ling yeah, it was Bill Ingvall. She's like, you know, there was a lawmaker a while back who wanted to make attempted suicide punishable by death. Okay. It's, it's like 
that McDonald's thing I showed you earlier where they literally said that quitting is banned. Yeah. You're not allowed that's to That's not how that works. Dude. It's a violation of the 18th <laughs> Amendment. It's yep. literally a violation of They're one of the amendments. They're literally holding you hostage when you're on the schedule at work. Yes! It's literally illegal. He did it. Well, put a ticket on his body. The, the other thing, too, is like, literally, what are you going to do about it? Like, if I just walk out and leave, what are you going to do about it? You're still going to send me my paycheck for the it, hours I worked. It, sounds like, the it sounds like those teachers who are just like, the bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. That can legitimately get you in trouble, though. What? Leaving whenever a teacher says that. Like, they can make you go to the office the next day and get you in trouble for that shit. That's the stupid part about that. Well, I get that, but... They that's... have the authority to pull something like that because school is legally allowed to hold you hostage, but your workplace is not. Exactly. It, it's just like, a job is a job. That's, that's just how it is. It, it's, but... You know, school's one thing. School is prison for children. Yes. That's because the police will come and get you and take you back to school and take your parents to jail if you're not there. So technically you don't get a choice on school. Well this is why I'm gonna homeschool my kids. Because I'm not subjecting them to the bullshit that is the public school system in this country. They're actually going to learn something. If I ever had kids I'll probably do the same. Also, that keeps them out of danger as well, since it doesn't seem like schools are in any hurry to try to input any kind of systems to keep kids safe. So. <laughs> of course not. You expect schools to give a shit about about keeping your kids safe? Well, no. They can barely afford the textbooks, too, so how are they going to afford to keep kids safe? Oh, that's actually one thing that Chad and I got mad about, because, well, Internet Archive, they actually have it to where you can... Like you can look up the books on Internet Archive and like access them like through an iPad, but book companies right now are trying to sue the Internet Archive and basically get all of like the printed stuff removed off there because they say it's a violation of copyright. Even though it's technically not a violation of copyright because the stuff is not the stuff while copyright protected and you're not able to make a sale on it, the Internet Archive is free. Mm. So. It's a legal gray area that, to me, like, Internet Archive is amazing because it has all this stuff on it that would basically, people wouldn't think it existed at all if it weren't for the Internet Archive. I mean, by the same logic, though, you'd think that pirating music and video games and stuff like that should not be, should be allowed. Well, technically it is. It's just, it's not enforced. It's just, like... The thing about laws is just like, is it really a law if it's not being enforced? That's just like during uh, like during uh, prohibition <coughs> in a lot of cities, like the police and stuff, people like that didn't give a shit who was drinking. It's just like there's drunks out on the streets. It's like, all right, whatever. It's just like unless one of them dies or something like that, then the cops usually didn't do anything, and it. it Honestly, whenever it comes to music piracy and all this and all that, if someone is selling it, that is a violation of uh, copyright and all that. But if someone is, you know, just like getting it and sharing it, you know, without any like physical, with any, with any like monetary gain or anything like that, then legally there's nothing wrong. There's no wrongdoing. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that you aren't going to get a, a letter from a law office basically saying that what you're doing is wrong. But honestly, I don't think there is a court in the country that would approve any lawsuit like that unless monetary gain was being... Well, like monetary gain was happening. It's what about Metallica sued the hell out of people for their music? Well, yeah. It's like, well, Napster, they did that on... Uh, they did that to Napster... And the reason why Napster went under was because the court costs basically bankrupted the company. That is the whole thing. But, Na I hate to say it, but... Well, they also did that to people who downloaded the music. Well, they did, but no. But the only the only company, the only like entity that actually went down was Napster. And it wasn't from, like, you know, they lost the lawsuit or anything like that. Napster literally went under... And because they couldn't pay their legal fees or anything like that, Sean Parker tried to sell the company in order to make money in order to pay the legal fees. But 
then there was like legal ramifications for that. It's basically uh, the equating was you're paying, you're selling the stolen car to pay for the stolen gas. That's what they, that was their equation for it. Yeah. But Sean Parker was right about one thing. He changed the music industry forever because, right, because after that, what became the standard for all music? Streaming. MP3s, streaming. Yeah. And, you know, it, and CDs and physical media, whilst I do still buy stuff physically because I actually want to own it myself, yeah, it changed the industry. I don't own any music anymore, really, except for the couple of CDs I've left over. I wasn't able to get rid of. Fair. <sighs> I just got tired of trying to collect it after I had to sell my whole collection at one point. I hear you. All right. Well, that's gonna do it. This was r slash facepalm. The world is your canvas. Thank you for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.